Hello and welcome. I'm Kimberlyn and it's story time. I'm glad that you're here. And I fully recognize that you may or may not be here at the same time that I am. But I'm really kind of digesting something that occurred to me in my morning reflection. <laughs> and that is the nature of reflection. So I captured an image yesterday while doing my walk around Baker Park and it was a picture of, of a bird, of a heron, in the creek. And what I loved about the image was not just the posture of this elegant bird that is quite massive. In fact, there's on the, the west end of um, Color Lake, the pond with the fountains at Baker Park, there's, I think, three nests of these herons, I think they're herons, <laughs> um, that I have been listening to and watching as I pass underneath on my walks since, since March. But it's the reflection in the water that got my attention when I was reflecting on this reflection of the image and, and what, what I know from my own story is that mirrors have been a functional tool, okay? And what I mean by that is I'm comfortable using mirrors to make sure that food is not in my teeth. I'm comfortable with mirrors in my former story of a dance instructor to see how the body moves and use that immediate feedback in learning choreography or learning control. But ironically, or maybe not, I am less inclined to use mirrors for yoga practice. Now, again, reflection is not just about mirrors and it's not just about seeing ourselves, right? In fact, that's what I kind of come to in my extrapolation is that when we are aware of our reflection, we can see it in our surroundings, right? Meaning the people that hang out with us and the places that we go. As I came down the hallway this morning, there was a, a um, let's call it a fur ball. <laughs> of hair and cat hair and dust that had congregated in the corner. So I just swooped down and picked it up, but paused for a moment based on my morning meditation reflection and I was like, huh, this is a reflection, right? Because it is in my world and if I pause to look at it, and it is in fact mostly my hair that congregates because of its length and its color, it's pretty distinct that I can see my hair. But the, the dust bunny, so to speak, is also a little bit of a reflection of what has been neglected in my surroundings, in my home. And I'm not sharing that to, to uh, I don't know. I mean, that's just the state of things, right? I'm spending more time in the studio and more time in my garden and honestly, trying to do more play when I'm not working in either my garden or in my studio. And as I've shared elsewhere, I am really, as a parent, trying to cultivate that attention to upkeep and maintenance of housekeeping to my children. But of course, my tolerance is a little bit different than their tolerance. I mean, a big difference, right? They have a lot more tolerance for dust and clutter than I do. But the reflection concept, right? So do you know anyone? Do you, do you have people in your life who are kind of obsessed with their own reflection? Like they can't pass by a store window without taking a, a glance and fixing their quaff or, or just even watching themselves animate their language. There's, there's a person that comes to mind in my life right now. 
And um, to be honest, I struggle with that kind of, let's call it narcissism, though that's not the clinical definition, but it does refer to narcissus, narcissus, um, the, the, the Greek story of the person obsessed with his own reflection until I think he drowns or something. He's like consumed or dies by staring at himself. But it takes a little more introspection and a little more attention to see our reflection in the things and the people and the consequences of our actions, the consequences of our doings and undoings, our non-doings and our redoings. When we can look at the world and see how I've made an impact. Now, truth be told, I think I'm, I'm heading into this kind of midlife crisis, which is probably spurred a little bit by COVID because everything is being challenged and everything is being questioned as I begin again, again. But I want an impact, right? I want to know that my work has mattered. And that tends to be correlated with a midlife kind of reflection and crisis. And so I want to invite all of us to take a look around and see where you are. What is it that you have contributed? What is it that is being reflected back? I was having a hard day, and uh, in, in that revelation, a friend was able to help me frame it in a way that really relieved some burden. And she actually invited me to just first recognize that recognizing was a big deal. Recognizing that I was having a hard day is something to be grateful for. And that is a practice, that is an evidence of what I have been doing in terms of the practice of authentic living, right? Not only that I could recognize that I was having a hard day, but that I had someone in my circle who could also hold space for me to be in an uncomfortable place and reflect back truth to me. That's, that's a circle. That's a tribe. That's why we need each other. And the more we can authentically know ourselves, the more we can be vulnerable enough to share that true, authentic self with others. And that transparency is what creates the reflection of our true self, of our Atman heart soul space in others. And this is so important because there are always going to be times, all of us forget who we are, lose our way are overwhelmed by the options and the choices that are presented to us that the fatigue of choice or the absence of real power and control over our circumstances exhausts us and we forget that this too shall pass. And that is where our community, our circle can reflect back to us when we've lost our way, when we've fallen out of line of sight with where we're going and why we're doing what we're doing. So I'm not sure what your story is in terms of reflection. I know that it's only been the last, literally the last three years that I have a mirror in my house. Sure, there are mirrors in the bathroom, functional, right? Functional for making sure that my teeth are clean and that my, well, my hair is pretty much out of control most times anyway, but controlled, out of control, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so that's the function of the mirror in the bathroom. But in the process of renovating my kitchen, living room entryway, I added a mirror for the fear, pure purposes of uh, aesthetics, right? Yeah, it does serve some function, but it's mostly in the entryway as a way to expand the feel of the entryway size. But it was a big deal. I was resistant to getting a mirror, to putting a mirror in for aesthetics purposes. 
And in fact, it is one of the, the signs um, when I'm work talking with someone in my, in my entryway, right, whether it's family or whether it's guests, to see how they respond to that mirror has been a bit of a game, a bit of a, hmm, so that's the relationship here. So again, mirrors are not bad. Being uh, interested in our appearance is not bad. Being consumed and obsessed with just our appearance maybe has some concerns, right? But identity to development is absolutely paramount to us becoming who we are meant to be and learning how to be ourselves. And how else do we do that except get feedback on who we are, what we look like, what we sound like. Do you remember the first time you heard your own voice? I was absolutely embarrassed, actually at what my voice sounded like. That's not what I hear, that's not what I think. And the same can be said about sometimes where a picture is captured and I'm like, that looks nothing like me, right? The images that we have of ourselves and even the images that we have of the work that we do, the contributions that we make, are often narrow in their scope because they are perspectives that only we have. That brings us back to the circle, is that the circle helps us to fill out that perspective, to see things from beyond just our own angle. So I'm gonna go for a walk today and see if I can't find the, the, the three nests that are here in Baker Park and uh, check and see how these herons are doing with their reflection and the environment that they're helping to create by being a part of Baker Park, just like you and I are a part of our communities. There are people who would miss if we did not show up, right? Trust that, trust that the work that you do by just showing up is enough. So see yourself for all that you are, the beauty and the awkwardness, the frizzy big hair, the crooked teeth, the, the heart-filled love, and even the sorrow, the sadness, the grief. That's all part of it. And when we can see it for what it is, that's the vulnerability where authentic connection can begin. Thanks for being here. Have a great Tuesday. I look forward to having guests again with me in story time, hopefully very soon, at least in terms of connection, we can come together here even in times of social distancing. But know that you are not distant from my heart, that I wish you well. In fact, may you breathe deeply and move freely, labor loving, and live vibrantly. Namaste.